Good Monday morning! Today I would like to talk to you a little bit about how I structure my projects for testability. I am MPJ and you are watching Fun Fun Function. You might be wondering why is this pretentious person wearing a scarf? I'm not pretentious, well I am pretentious, but uh, it, it's because um, this is Sweden, I live in Sweden and it's very cold in Sweden uh, and I've gotten a cold from the cold in Sweden, so I'm, I'm, I'm cold. I have a cold. That's also why my voice... <coughs> I get a lot of requests for uh, showing uh, more real-world projects on the channel. Uh, so I, I figured that I, I would do that. Um, we can't really show a project from start to finish because that is... Like, that's hundreds of hours of time and uh, it, it would be just very boring. Um, what I can do, though, is to show you uh, parts of my development process on the um, Fun Fun Forum Automator, which is a little tool that I have that automates a bunch of little things for the Fun Fun Forum, which you get access to if you are a patron of Fun Fun Function. If you're interested in that, you can check out that video talking about why you should become a patron. But that's not really, that's not really at all necessary or even necessary to understand this video. That is just if you want to support the channel. So let me uh, show you what we are, are going to work on today. All right, so this is the Fun Fun Forum. It's a discourse installation, which is uh, an open source um, forum software. It's really great. Uh, and um, among other capabilities, it has these badges. And what I want to do is uh, create badges for um, your editor identity. Are you a VS Code person? Are you an Atom person? Are you a uh, Sublime person? Uh, are you a Vim person? Uh, and uh, assign and give you the capability of awarding these badges to yourself because you are like an amazing VS Code person. Uh, and to do this, we're going to use the Discourse API. Uh, and we have, uh, this is the Discourse API. We, uh, they have an endpoint which allows us to uh, assign a, a badge to a user. It's called userbadges.json. Uh, and uh, I have this thing called the Fun Fun Automator on Heroku, which is already doing this, doing a bunch of things. So for instance, it has this endpoint, which is hackable JSON, which is a pretty funky thing. You can, um, uh, you can add arbitrary JSON to your user profile and then other users get access to that and can build uh, <laughs> dumb apps on top of it. Uh, it, it's just a, it's just a fun thing, uh, fun capability of the forum. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm telling you this because this hackable JSON endpoint is what we're going to base this thing on. Like this, sh take a look at this existing code. So if you look here in the, uh, in the source map, by the way, this code is linked in the episode description. So if you want to follow along, you can just check that specific branch out. So what we're interested in here is in the hackable JSON uh, function. So let's actually have a look at the, so you see that there's a hackable JSON.js. There's also a hackable JSON.sandbox.js and a hackable JSON.test.js. We're going to check out hackable sandbox, uh, hackable JSON.sandbox.js first. Going to open up an integrated terminal actually. And I'm going to uh, go node.src.hackablejson.sandbox.js. Uh, and that shows us, well, a bunch of JSON. Uh, and whoops, sorry. Uh, and uh, that's basically the JSON that we saw in the, uh, on the endpoint as well. Uh, and you see here that uh, hackable JSON. Let me actually delete that. Hackable JSON, it just uh, requires hackable JSON, this one, and then it calls it and then it logs it up. That's all it does and that gives us this thing. Sandbox is a concept that I like to use uh, to just play around with the live function without having to bother with the rest of the app. This is just a function that returns stuff from the um, 
from the real data thingamabob. It's a little sandbox just to test uh, hackable JSON out and see how it works. Um, let's have a look in uh, the hackable json.js file. Whoa, this was strange. This, uh, it requires in some query and there's a require here and then we call that query with the what? Okay, to make us more unconfused, let's have a look at, at query here. How does that work? That is another function. So let's jump into the query sandbox. Uh, so, okay, okay. So query accepts a three <laughs> and then some parameters and then it sniffs. Um, let's actually just run the sandbox and, and have a look at what, what it does. So node uh, src query uh, sandbox JS. All right, so this gives us a bunch of, of things. Uh, let me explain to you what the hell is happening here. So query three, so in discourse, there's this capability of, uh, I can create arbitrary SQL queries on the discourse database and expose them as API endpoints, which is very, very handy when you need to extract large amounts of data. So uh, what you see here is the query number three. Let's actually eh, put that there and see what that, that query is. Uh, that is the daily active users endpoint for the um, uh, for the form, so you can see how many users the form has at any given time. It's very handy for doing data analysis uh, for my moderators or me or you, if you want to see how many people are active on the form. And SuperSniff is basically just a fancy uh, console log that I use for uh, debugging stuff like this. Uh, it's a little module that I wrote. Um, you can check it out if you're interested. Otherwise, you can just think of it on, as doing kind of like the same thing as, as this. No. If I change this to uh, one, uh, that is actually going to give us hackable JSON. Let me actually just delete those parameters because hackable JSON doesn't care about parameters. And that gives us uh, this data. Uh, so th that gives you an idea what query is. It just gives us like the <laughs> SQL rows, basically. Uh, and then hackable JSON has as its job to mangle that a bit, little bit to remove like the superfluous data of of that re result. So perhaps we can see it here. I don't know. Uh, yeah. So you see here, like it gives a success true and it gives us rows, and we don't really care about all that. So let me close the query sandbox uh, and then have a look again inside of hackable JSON and try to make sense of this. So it takes this, uh, requires in a hackable JSON factory. Uh, okay, this, this is still a little bit confusing. So let's just jump into this factory and see what is, what is happening inside of that one. Okay, okay, so has a constant hackable JSON query ID, all right? And that that makes sense. It's uh, uh, it's the query for for this thing. Like it's uh, if we go to the data explorer, it's the uh, query for the hackable JSON. Um, that makes sense. Uh, then it declares a function which takes depths, and this stands for dependencies. And then that function will return another function, which is the actual function that does the, uh, the hackable JSON mad fetchy fetchy that actually calls query. So you see here, like what you need to note here is that we are doing a uh, dependency injection. Uh, we are injecting the dependencies into the function instead of you requiring them directly. And the reason we do this is so that we can intercept it and, and test it. I'm going to show you that later. Uh, but it, what it does is like it's called depths.query and then it just takes that result and then it uh, extracts uh, the users from uh, from the rows. So you see here from the result down here uh, that this is just the property that it extracts. It doesn't 
so far this function really doesn't do much at all. Like, like all good functions, it's very small and does very little. So it's a factory that cr creates the hackable JSON function. It's a mix of hackable JSON functions. Uh, so uh, let's go back to hackablejson.js, the, the weird magnifying. So you see here, like, you can extract this to make it a bit more obvious. Like, factory, wrap. And then we call the factory with uh, the dependencies. So maybe I can even make this a bit more obvious by, by doing this. Depths, and then wah, query. And then passing in uh, depths here. So this is the pattern. We uh, instead of uh, allowing the factory itself to uh, require things on its own, we pass it in to the uh, pass it into the factory. Let me show you why we do that. That is so that we can write tests for it. So let me show you how a test is structured. Actually, and uh, I, I'm going to close the. Um, terminal for now. This is the test. So uh, first it requires in the uh, factory. So it doesn't care about this file here. Uh, it, uh, it only tests the factory. The factory is where the actual code is. That's what we're testing. So here we begin our test suite. So uh, this is just and a test suite is uh, started by calling describe. Uh, and then inside of this test, you might have multiple tests. This, is, this test suite just contains one test so far uh, because the function is very simple so far. And it just, I just call it happy path. Uh, that's usually what I call my first test because um, Later, usually naming schemes uh, emerge, but for me, it's just like, okay, we're testing the happy part. That's the first thing we do, and you just... <clears throat> this is the before each, and just this is what is executed every uh, before every test. And uh, we create a fake dependency object, a fake depth object, which has a fake query object, which is null uh, for now. Uh, and then we uh, create the uh, hackable JSON uh, function by calling the factory uh, with the depths or fake depths. Let me actually show you the, the factory side by side so that you can reason about this thing a little bit more sanely. Uh, there. Okay. There. Okay. So, and I need to close that as well. <clears throat> All right, so we have when hackable JSON is called here, uh, it will call depths.query with the hackable JSON query ID. It's like that's over here. Uh, and in order for, to test that, to test that it's calling it with the correct ID, we are here uh, assigning uh, depths.query to like we're creating this fake function. It's not a fake function. It's a real function, but it's fake. Uh, it's it's not the real depths.query function. Uh, and the first thing that we do is that we use the expect for that uh, ID is one. Let me actually just start uh, my test runner Wallaby, which is a great little test runner that I've made. It's a sponsor, but I use it anyway. You can check out the video showing it there if you're interested. Uh, so if I change this to be two, this test is going to break. Like it's expected to be one. Uh, then uh, if it doesn't explode here, it's going to uh, continue and just return a promise that resolves to uh, like this result that we saw before. It's rows with some, use some stuff. And that is what we're going to get here. So when that is um, resolved, that is the result that is we're going to do uh, see here. And then it's going to map over this and create these new objects with username and hackable, uh, hackable JSON properties. So I've, if I, I change this to snarful name and save that, you see that, okay, it will fail here because 
it uh, expected uh, value to be some username and it received undefined because I've assigned the Schnorfel name. So that's basically how it works. We have this factory function that uh, accepts dependencies and then returns our actual proper function. Uh, and uh, it these dependencies here, we override them uh, here with a function that uh, expects to be called in a certain way. And if it is called in the correct way, it ret will return some simulated data that we want to return. And then we can verify that hackable JSON actually does what we uh, expect it to do with that data here. And then we return that uh, to Jest uh, and Jest expects to get a promise that resolves. And that, uh, that is actually all we have time for today because I, I'm trying to keep these new episodes short and sweet. You probably have like a million objections, comments, thoughts, confusions around this code. Uh, there's, uh, again, you can check out the, the code for this, for the episode in the episode description, find the, find the source code. Tomorrow, Tuesday, I'm going to be live coding the, uh, like the basis for next week's episode. So if you have any comments or thoughts or stuff uh, on uh, on what you saw here today, do tune in to that live stream. You can find me on twitch.tv slash fun fun function. That link is also in the episode description. We're going to start out with questions and answers about this code and like, whoa, oh, whatever you want to talk about really. Uh, and uh, then I'm going to be uh, live coding and you can follow along if you like. If you are new then welcome, you have just watched an episode of Fun Fun Function. I uh, release these every Monday morning 0800 GMT. If you are forgetful you can click subscribe here, turn on notifications in the YouTube app if you have it, or you can just watch another episode right now by clicking here. And don't forget to tune into the live stream tomorrow. I am MP <coughs> sick MPJ. Until next Monday morning, stay curious.